What's going on YouTube? We made the video for the monster cards, so as promised, we're going to do our top 10 favorite spell cards. Of course, that would be me and El Norte again, who's back <laughs> for another round. Let's call him Mr. Three Straight. Mr. Three Straight. <laughs> <laughs> He's been in on three straight videos, make yeah, it buddy. four here pretty soon. Yeah. And uh, He's starting to uh, get up there in fame. You know what's funny is uh, I haven't told Eddie about this. This is the first one I'm telling him. So I posted this in uh, the Oklahoma Yu-Gi-Oh group, which for those that know me know that I'm from Oklahoma. And the first question was, who the hell is Eddie North? <laughs> and I was like, savage, damn. But no, Eddie, of course, everyone knows Eddie. He's a well-respected player. and He's sometimes, uh, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. well-respected. <laughs> But all right, we're going to do our top ten favorite spells, so uh, let's start it off. I think I'll start by swinging for the fences with this fan favorite, Black Whirlwind. <laughs> I think a lot of people like Black Whirlwind. I mean, that's why, for some reason, the ultra-rare version of this card is still $8. Even though the deck sucked for 12 years now. <laughs> but Black Whirlwind, obviously, he was, it, was the, uh, it was the finishing touch to one of the most iconic decks in the history of the game I would say so what about you uh, I got Sylvan Charity I feel, I feel like um, the deck the deck was really really bad when it first came out but um, after they added Sylvan Charity and we got to play three Soul Charge for a format I think that's what put it over the top Curry Bandit yeah, I liked too. it a lot yeah Curry Bandit was a great turn, first turn yeah but yeah, that card was uh, really flexible, and uh, I thought that that card was pretty cool. Um, let's see, number nine. What do you have as your number nine? Magical Stone Excavation. Hey, he's <laughs> going classics. back in the day, back, back yeah. in the day. I've always wished that I could play that card nowadays and make it good, but the only thing I can think of right now is BA, but you don't even play spells. Yeah, you play like Foolish play, Burial. Yeah, like Twin Twister and Foolish Burial. Yeah. Maybe Soul Church. Um, so, yeah, that card's really fun. Uh, mm -hmm. Airblade and Turbo is literally, like, one of my favorite fun decks ever, and that card's definitely deserves a, a spot on that list, that's for sure. That card's so fun. Uh, my number eight card is Pot of Avarice because Savage some niggas. You skip nine. Oh, my number nine. <laughs> we'll start with that first. My number nine is a card everyone hates, including myself. And me. You know, I, I liked this card when it was all about them heroes, but I hated this card whenever it started being played in other decks, and that's, of course, Super Polymerization. You can fuse Jaden Yuki with uh, U-Bell and create a weird fucking guy that has cool eyes. Um, no. <laughs> but the biggest reason why I like Super Poly is because it actually made the Hero Mirror really skill-based because it made like both players play kind of in a, in a booth, so to speak. Yeah. It's like a slow pace. And uh, I thought it was really fun, because obviously, like, Super Poly was a real cost against all the decks that wasn't Heroes, and so, like, at the time it was really cool, and it was just a nice out to things like Logia. Yeah. But then, it came in Shadals and became ignorant, like, I'll kill you even though you get effects. <laughs> you have a Dante? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was... I have a Construct. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was, it was scary, because they could just kill you. But yeah, now I'll tell you about my number eight card, Pot of Avarice. <laughs> Yeah, the card's really fair. Um, <laughs> I just like to draw this card playing wind-ups and being like, well, I've got Zen Mighties and Magicians again. Bye. <laughs> Thanks for playing. <laughs> What's your number eight? Number eight's Lightning Vortex. It's another classic. Oh, Man. I love that card, too. Uh, I don't really have any reason to explain it. I just fucking love it. It's a super <laughs> rare, too. It's a salty. Get out of here. Uh, yeah, that's true. It is an ulti, also. My favorite part about that was, I don't know if you guys remember from the throwback days where Dark Hole was still banned. Yeah. And, uh, so, like, whoa, you're playing two Lightning Vortex, you're really aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> that was, th those were the days. What's your number seven? Dragon's Ravine. I missed that format, too. Nostalgia. Yeah, Dragon Rollers. I saw a little tear go down Eddie's eye. Yeah. He loved that format. That, that format was pretty awesome, though. Let's be honest. The format before that can go suck a fat yeah. one, but <laughs> that format was pretty sweet. My number seven is Forbidden Chalice. I literally played it in every side deck 
for like forever. It was really good, especially when you played against when uh, you know Reaper and Snow Manager were really really played. And then also like it was also just good against Zekers and Windups. So you just threw it in there. You're like, hey, covers like three matchups. It's kind of like a be it's kind of like a better effect better sort of in a way, because yeah. you can just hold it on your turn and take care of everything that's going to go on during your turn, even in the damage step. So yeah, one of my favorite things one of my favorite things about Chalice was during the format that I said can go suck a fat one. <laughs> uh, people made this one card called Ophion, and uh, <laughs> you would just summon a baby dragon, go to damage step, and Chalice it. Right. And if they chained us, uh, if they if when you attack they activated a. Uh, Pandemic, and you just change shells there. My number six card is the greatest top deck in Yu Gi Oh! Miracle Fusion. Oh, I thought we had the same thing. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> is yours pretty good too? Uh, yeah. Oh, it yeah, is pretty it's good. Pretty good. <laughs> it might even be better. But number uh, six is Top Deck Wars. Which do you prefer, Miracle Fusion or Preparation of Rights? <laughs> <laughs> Those cards are the greatest, like, top decks ever. Man, best of Yu Gi Oh! Do you remember when some I, my my favorite Miracle Fusion moment was reading the feature match at Long Beach between Michael Balon and uh, and Joji Orlando. Even though Joe ended up losing the match in game two, he was like, "Man, I just lose." And then he drew Miracle Fusion and got to attack over Graffa with Shining, and that was so cool. <laughs> Graffa. <laughs> What's your number five? My number five is Enemy Controller. Oh, I wish Advantage like that was still good nowadays. Like you back in the day, you just steal a monster with a treeborn frog, and your opponent let out a sigh because there's so much back then. Or you'd smack a monster with full helm knight and bring back a dark soul, and you just go bananas from there. And now yeah. it's like you play enemy controller, you scrub. <laughs> <laughs> uh, enemy controller had some time with BA too. It was yeah. really good. And then of course uh, we all know the Danko doll list that uh, Jeff Jones made that played enemy controller. So. Enemy controller has been always one of my favorites because it's just been so flexible and so good for so long. I mean, remember when changing battle positions mattered too? Right. I mean, that card used to be so flexible. And then it's a spell and everyone played Decree and yeah, it was it's cool. One of those spell traps like Book of My number five and fuck Patrick Hoban. Just kidding. Pat, <laughs> Pat's, Pat's cool as fuck, but my number five is Upstart Goblin, but it has nothing to do with Patrick Hoban. I've always liked Upstart Goblin and I always love super rares and... Upstart is one of my favorite super rares. Um, I just really always like the idea of making my deck really consistent. I play decks like Windups. You don't really have a lot of room for error in your opening hand with those kind of decks, so I've always played cards like that. My number four kind of branches off that as well, and uh, Pot of Duality is, is the card. I love Pot of Duality. Um, when that card came out of uh, Duelist Revolution, yep. right? By the way, that was definitely at the time the greatest set ever, besides maybe IOC. And that set just had everything. Warning, Scrap Dragon, Solemn Warning, Effect Veiler, Effect Veiler Scrap, uh, uh, Swift Scarecrow, like a whole bunch of cards. Oh, it's Star Trek Glass <laughs> for Scarecrow. My bad, my bad. I think Mystic oh, Rough Panel came in yeah, that set. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it did too. Yeah, D-Rev was cool, but... Uh, Pot of Duality was $180, and I didn't get to have any, and then it got reprinted as a super, and I had, like, all of them. As many as you wish you had back then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What's number four for me? Oh, Soul Charge. More broken stuff. Yeah, that might be my least favorite spell. <laughs> I think my least favorite spell is Raigeki. Uh, that's uh, up there, too. I fucking hate that card. Especially when people make a Dweller, and I'm having two Dantes, and they Raigeki <laughs> me. I just want to punch them and be like, fuck you. <laughs> What's your number three? Number three is Foolish Burial. So much flexibility in everything. Almost everything. Maybe place. the most flexible spell card in Yu-Gi-Oh. Possibly. Besides my number three, which is Book of Moon. Book of Moon, Book of Moon is, like, on everyone's list almost, I'd say. Book of Moon's just so cool. Like, it's defined formats. It's also been a floodgate against BA in a way. Sort of, I mean, yeah. It's, it's done so much for this Book game. Book of Raigeki. Book of Raigeki, <laughs> yeah. Like flying Raigeki. Book of Moon is like, <laughs> Book of Moon is like one of my favorite cards. You get to like do cool things. Like it's literally the most flexible card ever. Push effects through, deal with monsters, answer traps done in Ra and Royal Decree. Like it just literally did everything you could ask for. Cool uh, battle step tricks. Awesome card. Mm. Attacking through Valk for game. Yeah. <laughs> 
Gungnir did that too, though. Yeah. What are we at? Number two now? Yeah. I've got Spellbook of Fate as a personal favorite. Oh, yeah, you I, can fuck yourself. Man. <laughs> <laughs> it, just, it had three different effects. Just, and uh, all of them were used to just... And all of them man, did not target. All of them used. All of them were good. But all of them did not target. <laughs> I hated that card, the first one. Because, <laughs> you know... Um, I played windups for forever, and spellbooks were literally the one deck that was like the hardest thing ever. My number two, which uh, is something that most people aren't surprised, I'm sure, is Messenger of Peace. I played that, and <laughs> I played that, and uh, Messenger of Peace was like one of my favorite cards ever because I got to play Messenger of Peace, Peace and Girgia, which is really good. No one else did that except for like two of my friends at Nats are like. Bro, I literally all I had was an armor and I drew messenger and I won. <laughs> <laughs> the card was so cool and then like in windups we all know what it did in that deck. Like, oh you're never killing magician, so just don't even worry about it. Just let him do it. <laughs> yeah. You'll know. My number one, which is probably Ta da uh, Wind Up Factory. <laughs> I love my I love my influx of new toys, as Pegasus said. <laughs> Uh, I <laughs> <laughs> oh boy! Oh, I see you're number yeah. one. That card's like one of Small my least fusion. favorite. <laughs> free cards are free. Cool cards are cool. I like getting punished yeah. for playing the game. <laughs> I like stopping Reflesia with Shekinaga. That was Didn't really my cool. Opponent. Oh my gosh! I like okay. Shadal Fusion now so much more now that I don't have to worry about playing against it a lot. <laughs> <It's construct>, yeah. <laughs> oh man. But yeah, Shadal Fusion is fucking the titties. <laughs> yeah, I wish I could rewind time and change my side deck before Atlanta. Yeah? Yeah. I should have been playing Dark Horn or Dicky. Shadal Fusion was broken all day except for against Monarchs. <laughs> yeah, Monarchs are pretty good too. So, that's our top yeah. ten. Let us know it's what your cards. top ten is in the... In the... The green department. <laughs> I was about to tell him in the graveyard. <laughs> but I meant the comment section. Might as well be the graveyard. Have you seen some of the shit that gets posted in the comment section?